Hey, what's going on, U.S. History people? This is video number two for the U.S. Regents Review. This one is on Colonial America to the American Revolution. And remember, I am breaking down the five most recent U.S. History Regents exams, the multiple choice questions, so you will know what to expect on your exam. All right, so let's talk about some key Colonial America ideas. Well, let's start off with mercantilism. This is something you should be familiar with from Global 2. And two of the five previous exams had multiple choice questions about mercantilism. Now, this is the economic philosophy in which the colonies, in this case, America, we're looking over here at this political cartoon, these are colonies, exist for the benefit of the mother country, in this case, England or Great Britain. So the mother country is here, and the colonies are serving the mother country gold and silver, foodstuffs, and raw materials. So the colonies exist for the benefit of the mother country. Now, what are some types of questions that have been asked? We have seen questions that ask ways that Britain carried out or promoted mercantilism, and the answers will be something along the lines of controlling commerce or requiring colonial trade with the British Empire. Britain is only going to want the U.S. to trade with Britain, and they're going to control that. So think of controlling trade or controlling commerce. The next topic, three of the five previous exams, has discussed colonial governments. And some types of questions asked, a very similar one, a very frequent one, is you will see a heading that completes the outline. So, for example, the outline would be the Virginia House of Burgesses, the Mayflower Compact, and the New England Town Meetings. And you will be asked to identify what would the heading be for these topics. And the answers are going to be something along the lines of developments in self-government or efforts at self-government. Keep in mind it is something with self-government. So when you see the Virginia House of Burgesses, Mayflower Compact, or New England Town Hall meetings, just be able to identify that some form of self-government. The colonies are ruling themselves. Another question asked about the type of political feature during the colonial period, and the answer is representative government, which is the same exact thing as self-government. So when in doubt, when you see Virginia House of Burgesses, Mayflower Compact, New England Town Meetings, choose the answer This is self-government or representative government, and you will get a hundo on that question. All right, let's go to John Peter Zanger. He, he appears every now and then, not often, only one out of the previous five, but his trial is very important in American history. And his trial is also, the question will also, will often ask about John Peter Zanger or the John Peter Zanger court case. And specifically, what is the impact of the court case? Well, his trial deals with freedom of the press. And this establishes the idea of freedom of the press, which you can connect to the First Amendment or the Bill of Rights. So when in doubt, when you see John Peter Zanger, you're thinking freedom of the press. Another question is asked about the economic development of the South. In other words, why did the South develop the way it did? This was one out of five previous exams. And the type of question asked was, what influenced the economic development of the South? So in other words, why did the South develop agriculturally? Well, they had a warm and wet growing season. So anything to do with farming or agriculture is going to be your answer there. All right, John Locke, super important. This dude is on four out of five exams, so you can bet you will see him. Types of questions asked are about the social contract and natural rights, and that's connecting it, his ideas to the Declaration of Independence. So the social contract is the idea that the people are the power in government. They give consent to politicians to govern. So the real power doesn't come from politicians, but the people who vote them in. And this also says... And he also believes when the social contract is violated, when the government abuses its power, people can overthrow that government. There's John Locke. And no, I can't stress this enough, know that this influenced Thomas Jefferson, who we'll talk about more in a bit, and the Declaration of Independence. That is often how it is linked. John Locke is linked to Thomas Jefferson. So when we're talking about natural rights, John Locke came up with these ideas of life, liberty, and property. Thomas Jefferson, when he was writing the Declaration of Independence, wrote about life, liberty, and property. So remember, John Locke influenced Thomas Jefferson and the Declaration of Independence. So if you see John Locke, you should instantly look for an answer that connects him to either Thomas Jefferson or the Declaration of Independence. Almost guaranteed to see him, so make sure you know it. Another famous thinker is Thomas Paine, or T. Paine as I like to call him, and he wrote a very famous pamphlet called Common Sense, and this has appeared on two out of the five previous exams. So types of questions asked are what did T. Paine urge the colonists to do, and the answer is establish their own nation or break away from England. So he said to the colonies, listen, you should not be controlled by this faraway country, Great Britain or England. Another question 
gave an excerpt from Common Sense and asked about the argument that Thomas Paine made. And he argued that America is too far away to be governed by England or Great Britain. So America is too far away, too big to be governed by this small little country. So when you see Thomas Paine and or Common Sense, I want you to think of America breaking away or forming their own nation. And this is instrumental in leading to the Declaration of Independence. Thomas Paine, Common Sense, breaking away, forming their own nation. All right, so we have the Declaration of Independence written by these three dudes. We have Thomas Jefferson, Ben Franklin, and John Adams, although Thomas Jefferson gets most of the credit for it. On four out of five previous exams, Declaration of Independence has been a question. So types of questions asked. Two of them dealt with an excerpt from the Declaration. You know, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You see that, you know it's the Declaration. And one of the questions that was identifying that this document, this excerpt is from the document, the Declaration of Independence. The other question dealt with where does authority or power come from? And again, it's that social contract theory. It's not the government, it's the people. And John Locke helped influence this document. That was another question on there. So John Locke, again, influenced the Declaration of Independence, those natural rights. The social contract theory was influenced by John Locke. I can't stress this enough. John Locke, think Declaration of Independence. So why was the social contract theory incorporated? That was another question that was asked. And it's just it's incorporated to justify overthrowing an unjust or unfair government. Please make sure you know this. Again, I can pretty much guarantee you'll see it. All right, guys, video number three will do with the Articles of the Confederation and the Constitution. More stuff that you can be guaranteed to see in your exam. Make sure you review it. And best of luck. You got this. You're going to do great on your Regents exam. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.